Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my art lab. Every month, um, I challenge my Patreon group uh, to uh, experiment with different techniques, different colors, that kind of thing. Sometimes it's something fun and easy, like last month we did um, sunflowers and there were some spectacular results. Um, and uh, sometimes I give them something that I know is going to stretch them. So that is what we're doing this month. Um, the uh, challenge this month was to do either a wing pour or a waterfall pour. Uh, both of these are very similar, they're poured very similarly um, because you uh, elevate one end of your canvas after you put down your base coat, let your, layer your cup, and then you pour it from the high end and let it float down the canvas. Um, for the wing pours, I like to use my um, split cup uh, because it's easy to get that wing shape. Uh, but the tilting out of that is very difficult. I have a, a, a small playlist of some of the ones I've done in the past, so I will include that at the top of your screen if you want to check that out. Um, but tonight I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment with waterfall pours. I've seen this done, and I've done it, uh, two different ways. And one way is to pour from behind the canvas like this, and I've seen and done it poured this way. And it does give a different result. So we're gonna do side-by-side -side comparisons tonight and see um, which one of those I prefer. Um, and hopefully for you also. So um, let me explain to you my colors. I have Golden's Dioxazine Purple, and it's a really beautiful, um, very dark, dark purple. Um, and then I have Liquitex Basics Deep Violet, which is one of my absolute favorite colors. And uh, another staple of mine, which is Amsterdam's uh, Greenish Blue. And uh, all of these paints are mixed, uh, three parts pouring medium to one part paint, and very little water added, just uh, enough so that it flows very easily, but it still leaves a mound on a mound. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. Uh, this is DecoArt 24 karat gold, again, leaving a mound on a mound. All of my paints are mixed to the same consistency. This is a mix of uh, Chroma Curl Acrylic Essentials in white and a little bit of DecoArt Matte Metallics Ivory Pearl. Um, I've been using that in my pearl pores, and I know that my Chroma Curl usually helps me get bolder cells. And I'm wondering if the uh, ivory pearl will have it kind of enhance that. So that's the, the hope there. Um, and in between my darker colors that I've got here, I have some leftover pearl, Amsterdam pearl colors. This is pearl violet, and this is a, a mix of Amsterdam pearl blue and green. So I'm hoping it is a bit of a turquoisey color. So um, those will be fun, and I will be layering those in between the darker colors. So let's go ahead and layer the cup. Both cups at the same time. I'm gonna layer these cups exactly the same or as close as I can get um, so that we see a, a, an obvious difference between the two ways that I'm pouring. Or maybe there's no difference at all, we'll see. But I, I really think it's gonna be a little bit different. So let's start, I think I want to start with some of the dioxazine purple in the bottom of the cup as the last color to come out. Try and match up the volumes of each layer. So a little bit of that, and then I'm gonna go in with the white. I'm happy to have lots of white in this. And I love the, the strong crack contrast of uh, the darker colors with the whites. And sometimes, even though these paints are thick, sometimes you end up with some blending and it'll make a softer purple color. So a little bit of gold on top of the white. Using metallics like this layered in between non-metallics is a great way to get, um, uh, to get cells that come up naturally. So on top of the gold, I'm gonna put some of the greenish blue. And 
then I'm going to go in with this pearl turquoise I mixed up. You won't be able, it'll just look like white, I think, when we, when we look at our wet results, but hopefully we'll see the difference when it's dry. So let's go with the, um, that was the turquoise, so let's go with this deep violet on top of that. Ooh, that might be really pretty. I love turquoise and violet together. Nice thick layer of that. This is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> and on top of that, we're gonna put some more of the white. For a 16 by 24 inch canvas, we need uh, 13 ounces of paint. And this just happens to be a 13 ounce cup. So I'm going to be filling these right up to the top. On a wing pour, uh, you don't want to use, since you want to keep the shape of the wings on the canvas, and you tilt mostly forward and back, not towards the corners, you want to use less paint for the wing pour. But for a waterfall pour, it's okay to cover the entire canvas, so I am going to layer these completely to the top. Okay, so I haven't added the pearl violet yet, so let's put in the dioxazine purple again. close okay good so let's add some pearl violet on top of that should be a nice little accent color in between some of these darker colors hopefully there we go and you can see that my paints are are thick enough that they're just stacking right on top of each other they're not when I pour it in it's not piercing the layer Let's go back in with the blue on top of that violet. Yep. A little bit more white. And with this deep fire, let's just fill that right up. This one. And on this one. It's rainy season here in Costa Rica. Well, the, the very beginning of rainy season, so I'm assuming a lot of my videos are going to come out with a lot of uh, background noise. I apologize if that's distracting. There's some rain, some thunder. But I'm also realizing, realizing I was so excited to paint, I forgot to have dinner. So some of the rumbles you hear may be my stomach growling. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. That is a beautifully layered cup. Look at those colors, awesome. Okay, let's move all these out of the way. Oh, I forgot to show you, my um, base coat color is just some, uh, some um, table scrapings and leftover colors. This is, I don't have a stir stick on me, but um, this is just a, a, an amalgamation of a bunch of different colors. I have no idea what all's in there. I can tell it's metallic, so I think there's some gold in there. Let me grab a stir stick because I'll show you that my consistency is a little thinner for the base coat. Its job really is just to allow the other paints to flow. So, uh, is there one that I can compare it to? Let's see. Here's the white, a little hard to see. Mound on a mound. This one leaves a mound, but it disappears very quickly. So it is thinner. Uh, I'm gonna use my OXO spatula to spread the paint um, and then tilt it out so that it leaves no ripples on the canvas because that can affect how the paints move down the canvas as I pour it. Um, and I have some 
really cheap canvases that I bought from the craft store locally here, um, and they were a little they were a little uh, warpy in the or a little loose in the middle. So I have sprayed my canvases. So if it looks a little dark here in the center, that's just just because I've sprayed the back. I haven't even taped off the back here because this is just an experiment. Um, yeah, so I can elevate that. I think we're going to be good. All right, so let's go ahead and put on some music for you. I will uh, do these one at a time and um, let's have some fun.
puedo traer la luz del sol y las estrellas si quieres depender de mí que te ilumine a ti te dé toda mi energía No quiero ser tu salvación, tampoco soy tu religión. Hacete cargo de tu vida, mi amor no significa posesión, no significa solución de tu problema, resuelve tu dilema. Quiero vivir sabiendo que hay amor profundo y sincero. Tampoco soy tu religión Hacerte cargo de tu vida Mi amor no significa posesión No significa solución de tu problema Anda, resuelve tu dilema Okay, so here are the wet results. I think you can clearly see the difference uh, pouring from behind the canvas or pouring towards the top of the canvas, in front of it. Um, a lot more blending in this one, a lot more blocks of color. It's a little more bold. Um, uh, just so much more blending in this. I even tilted them out both the same way so we could get similar compositions so we could really get a good look. I think you can clearly see the difference. So let's start with the first one where I poured from behind. These fingerlings are amazing. I did a standard straight pour. I did not move back and forth or anything. This is just because the paints are thick enough that as it hits the canvas, it kind of folds over top of itself and it creates these little fingerlings. Isn't that beautiful? Can you get close? Oh, I can't wait to see 
which of those colors are the, which of the whites there are the Amsterdam pearl colors. That is gonna be really beautiful. I love these lines. Ooh, so pretty. I'm just gonna go all the way around the outside first. Oh no, a hair. <laughs> I'll get that out in a moment. I'm shedding. This is really cool. I love that corner, that deep violet. Oof, pretty. Look at that. Ooh, that's nice too. Mm-hmm. I love all these fingerlines. Ooh, these have violet on the tips. Isn't that nice? That gold is really gonna sparkle. I love the way these kind of come down here. That's pretty. More great fingerlings. And then we start here in the bottom left-hand corner. Let's go up to the center. See how solid that color is. There are some cells trying to come up through. I could have waited another three or four minutes to allow more cells to, to come up. I didn't get any of the bolder cells I was hoping for, but um, I'm still, I'm loving this. Look at those really tiny fine lines and layers. And there is some blending. Yeah, I really, really like that. So wet, this is my favorite. But let's come over and look at this one. Um, and check this one out too, because it is beautiful also. So starting here in this corner, we still get great fingerlings, but even the colors within the fingerlings, you can tell they're a little more blended. Ooh, it's pretty though, look at that. That looks like cut and polished stone of some kind. Really nice. I just mixed these paints, so there's a lot of air bubbles. Again, it was just an experiment to see if we could tell the difference. Look at that section there. Oh, that's so pretty. Mm. And because there was so much more blending, that deep violet mixed a lot with the white and gave us a lot of pink, which I'm happy about. I like pink. And, but look at that section there. See how soft that is? That's really nice. So if that's, the kind of, if that's what you're going for, then this is definitely the way to do it. Look at that. That's, that's beautiful. I love that. Okay. When you get in and look at the details, oh, look at those fingerlings there. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not mad about this at all. That's really pretty. Okay, and then let's go back up to the center. So see, look at all that right there. Isn't that beautiful? That blending and those ridges coming through it. Yeah, that's really nice too. Now, this section here, I haven't done this since I was a newbie, but I got too close to the uh, surface of the paint when I, was, um, when I was torching for the air bubbles. There was a stubborn air bubble there. I was trying to get out. I got too close and I actually scorched my paint. I haven't done that since I was a newbie. Um, but maybe it's good to show you guys what it looks like when you get too close and you kind of scorch the surface. It stretches out. Um, and makes it kind of this pebbly look here, which is not ideal. But again, just an experiment. All right, so this one's my favorite, but I really like this one too. Let's see if um, that holds true once they dry. So let's see the, the dry results next. So here we have our dry results. I think these dry beautifully. Why did I do this on test canvases? They're beautiful. I used my favorite colors and everything. <laughs> but I think this uh, was a successful experiment. I can definitely tell the difference between the two. The one on the right is the one that was poured uh, from behind the canvas, kind of flowing down. The colors are beautiful. And these fingerlings are gorgeous. You can see a little bit here Trying to catch it in the light of the uh, the pearl violet. Obviously, the gold has a lot of shimmer to it. There's some pearl violet right in there, and I think I found some of the pearl turquoise that I made down here in this corner. It's a little hard to see in this light. I apologize, but look how dark that dioxazine purple dried there. 
I really love this one. This is my favorite, and especially that upper corner. Wow, that's pretty. But this one's beautiful too. I really like it. I, I have a feeling that if you're, if you like a softer look, you will like this one better. Um, but yeah, I, the, the gold is gorgeous in here. Some tiny little cells popped up from the, um, uh, from the air bubbles. But I really like this one too, especially this corner here is beautiful. Wow. Okay. So thank you very much for watching. We have an entire playlist for you um, uh, for uh, the rest of the Art Lab who have YouTube channels. Um, it is included in the description box below. Please check them out. Hopefully you'll be inspired and you'll learn something. Everybody worked really hard on these two very difficult techniques, the wing pour and the water for fall pour. So uh, please uh, check them out, give them a like, subscribe, all of that kind of stuff. And then stay tuned. I have several people in the art lab who do not have channels and I've included their art uh, here in this video, uh, photos and uh, descriptions of their work. So please stick around for the next minute or two and you'll see those and then follow along the playlist for the rest of the collab. Thank you very much for watching and go make some paint and be fearless.